Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is a le uh, this is lecture three from this number theory series. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about prime factorization. So, prime factorization is basically you are given a number n, and you have to find the prime factors of the given number n. For example, if the number is hundred, then uh, you have to print two comma two next line five comma two. Or uh, two comma two means 2 raised to power 2 of course and 5 comma 2 means 5 raised to power 2 so how we can do it uh, the brute force approach is very uh, straightforward so we run a loop from 2 to n and if i divides n then we initialize the count to 0 and while i divides it till then we each time increment the counter and divide i sorry divide n by i and finally when this while loop over uh, this while loop executes completely we would print i raised to power count so if i take you through this example it would be you would start from 2 but 2 doesn't divide this number as there is no uh, prime 2 in its factorization so uh, then you would move on to 3, 4, 5, 6 and then 7 now 7 divides it so you would come here the count would become 0 and since the number n currently is this is divisible by 7 so you would increment the count so the count would become 1 and you would divide number n by 7 so when you divide number n by 7 7's power would reduce to 2 so it would, it would become 2 and count become 1 uh, count becomes 1 and again since n is still divisible by 7 so we would again divide n by 7 and increment the count so it would become 7 raised to the power 1 and count becomes 2 now again it is divisible by 7 so we would divide it by 7 and count bec uh, becomes 3 and now the number as you can see is not divisible by 7 so now uh, the while loop gets executed completely you would come out and then you would print 7 raised to power count that is 3 and next line and now from 7 we would continue sorry from 7 we would continue 8 the number is not divisible by 8 9 10 then 11 12 and then 13 at 13 the number is divisible by 13 so uh, since number is divisible by 13 so we would come out here we would initialize count to be 0 and till the number is divisible by 13 we would increment the count and divide it by 13 so the number is only divisible by once so after dividing n by 13 uh, it would reduce the power of 13 to 0 and now count becomes 1 so you would print 13 raised to power 1 and now you would move on Oh, sorry from 13 you would keep incrementing till 23 since only at 23 you would find the number which divides it so you see each time uh, we uh, when we come inside this loop i is actually a prime number and you can prove that the first divisor starting from 2 of any number is prime and if you remove all powers of it then the next divisor itself would be prime again so again we would come here at 23 and then keep incrementing and then we would finally print 23 raised to power 12 so sorry so the overall time complexity of this is linear or to give you a better idea of time complexity you see we are coming inside only when uh, i is prime i divides n and i is prime so and then we are running a while loop till the number n is divisible by i so this loop runs uh, log log of i times log i i mean log n times with base i so you see uh, the number is 23 raised to power 12 so if you see the while loop would run 12 times here so if we assume okay the 
inside of it gets executed a uh, constant time assume uh, if n is 10 to the power 9 then even in the worst case it would be executed this while loop would be executed at most uh, 31 or 32 times so if you assume okay the inside part gets executed in con uh, till uh, login time so just how many times just calculate how many times we would get inside this so in worst case we would get inside this if statement as many times as there are different primes in the factorization of n now till 10 is power 9 if you see if you multiply first like 10 prime numbers i guess yeah if you multiply first 10 prime numbers then the number comes out to be 6 into 10 to the power 9 so till 10 to the power 9 you won't get more than uh, 10 different prime so in this if statement you come 10 times and at max and the inside of it gets executed log n time log of n so the complexity it may seem that it is like uh, 10 into log n which you can see uh, is equivalent to log n in uh, in big O notation but the problem is if the given number is actually prime then the worst case occurs if the given number is this of course the uh, you would get inside the loop uh, like 10 times uh, first for 2 and then for 3 and then for 5 and so on till 29 so uh, you would get inside at max 10 times and uh, the inside gets executed in till log n time so overall complexity seems to be like log n but the, the worst part of it is that if, what if the input itself is a prime number say uh, 103 or 107 then the problem is that the while loop or oh sorry the for loop would run all the way till n because from 2 to less than n you would find no number which would divide it of course that's the uh, definition of a prime number so no number except n or 1 divides it so if you start a loop from 2 you have to go till uh, n then you would find uh, i such that i divides n so if the input is 10 to the power 9 plus 7 uh, this number is very famous you might have seen it in many computer programming uh, questions the, pro uh, the number 10 to the power 9 plus 7 itself is a prime number so if the input is 10 to the power 9 plus 7 so you see you have to go all the way till 10 to the power 9 plus 7 so that is the uh, that is where the worst pass uh, worst part occurs uh, if the input number is prime then you have to go all all the way through 2 to that number and that is where the complexity of this is actually linear that is why in worst case the time complexity would be big O of n so how we can improve upon this time complexity so to optimize it just look at this claim the claim says if m or sorry if n is a composite number then there is at least one prime divisor of n below square root of n uh, for example if you see the smallest composite number is actually 4 so you see uh, square root of 4 is 2 so below 2 you would find a prime divisor that is true uh, 6 itself is a, a composite number and if you see uh, square root of 6 would be 2 point something I guess and below 2 point something you would find a prime divisor of 6 which is 2 so if n is a composite number and this is not a formal proof of course this is just example I advise you to so, uh, find the proof yourself and try to prove it yourself and if you are following this series then then you know in the lecture when we were studying uh, primality test 
there we have talked about uh, this square root thing and we have proved that so this thing I'm leaving to you to prove then if n is a composite number then there is a prime divisor below square root of n we would use this fact to optimize a solution and then instead of running a loop till n we would run only till square root of n so what would happen if n is a composite number we would keep on finding its divisor or basically prime divisor and if n is not a prime number then finally n would be greater than n or uh, n would be greater than 1 let me tell you with an example so take an example of let this thing so I would come to 7 and then since 7 square is less than this this number so we would uh, I would run till 7 and then you would come out and divide it and then n would become 13 raised to power 1 multiplied by 23 raised to power 7 so then I would keep on incrementing till i becomes 13 of course 13 square is less than 13 raised to power n oh sorry 13 raised to power 1 multiplied by 23 raised to power 2 so we would come inside and then since 13 divides n we would uh, divide it once time and then print it and then now the n becomes only 23 raised to power 2 now i would keep on incrementing till uh, 23 also uh, uh, I would keep on incrementing till i becomes 23 of course 23 raised to power 2 is smaller than equal to 23 raised to power 2 so we would come inside and then since the number is divisible by 23 we would complete our execution and then print 23 raised to power 2 suppose it was 23 raised to power 1 then as soon as we move to 14 after execution of 13 uh, factor when i becomes 14 i square that is 14 into 14 is not smaller than equal to 23 i'm talking about the fact when there was only 23 raised to power 1 the number was 7 raised to power 3 13 raised to power 1 and 23 raised to power 1 then what would happen i square that is uh, after completing this part then i would become 14 and 14 into 14 that is 14 square is not less than equals to 23 so we would not get inside instead the for loop will complete its execution and then we would come inside and then we would n is actually 23 so if n is greater than 1 yes n is greater than 1 because n is 23 so we would print n raised to power 1 because we would come inside uh, outside this for loop and if we come outside this for loop and n is still greater than 1 which indicates that n is a prime number so we would pr print prime number raised to power 1 and why we come outside because n is a prime number because uh, if n is prime number then there is no prime divisor below square root of n and by previous claim we have seen that n has a prime num uh, prime divisor at least one prime divisor below square root of n if n is a composite number but if n is a prime number then there would be no prime divisor below square root of n so that is why we come outside this for loop and if n is greater than 1 then n itself is a prime number take an example of 7 itself 2 square is less than 7 but 2 doesn't divide 7 3 square is not less than 7 so we would come out this loop and n is 7 which is greater than 1 of course so you would print 7 raised to power 1 so this uh, for this approach the complexity is square root of n because this for loop runs for uh, till square root of n so this way we can calculate uh, the prime factorization of a number in square root of n time and there is also a way to calculate prime factorization of a number in log n time using sieve again so we would see that in next lecture till then keep coding and keep playing with this thing thank you